Next Chapter Podcasts. Hey, Play On Podcast listeners. I want you to be a part of the cast. Become a supporting cast member with Play On Podcasts for just $5 a month. Get in-depth interviews featuring some of the most brilliant artists working today. I talk to actors, playwrights, directors, and producers from the worlds of theater and Hollywood, pulling back the curtain on why they got into their profession, why these stories are so relevant today, and providing context on the process of making these plays in the podcast format. You'll enjoy ad-free episodes of the Play On podcast series, and maybe even a gift or two. Head over to playonpodcasts.com Click Supporting Cast and join the club today. We so love creating this content for you, and we hope you'll support us so we can bring you inside this rejuvenated, reimagined Shakespearean world. Join the cast. Supporting Cast. Go to ncpodcasts.com. Next Chapter Podcasts presents the Play On Podcast Series, Twelfth Night, Episode 7, You Are She. For the best listening experience, be sure to use headphones or earbuds. And don't forget, if music be the food of love, play on. Illyria reveals her true magic, as everyone we have come to know reveals their true selves. But of course, before that, there is another letter, this one written by Malvolio. Now, as you love me, let me see the letter Malvolio wrote. Good Mademoiselle Mariah, grant me another request. Anything. Do not ask to see the letter Malvolio wrote. Oh, this is to give me a dog and ask me to return the favor by giving the dog back to you. (laughs) Watch your step, Curio. (laughs) (laughs) Working for the Lady Olivia, friends. Oh, yes, sir. We are some of her toilers. I know you well. How are you, fine fellow? Truly, sir, the better for having enemies and the worse for having friends. Well, just the contrary. The better for having friends. No, sir, the worse. (sighs) How can that be? Well, sir, my friends praise me and make an ass of me. Now my enemies tell me plainly, I am an ass, so that by my enemies, sir, I profit in the knowledge of myself, and by my friends, I am misled. So that conclusions being multiplied, if your four negatives make your two positives, why then, the worse for having friends and the better for having... Huh? Huh? Enemies! (laughs) (laughs) Well, this is excellent. Truly, sir, no. Though I see you are one of my friends... Uh, You shall not be the worst for me. There's gold. Except that it would be double dealing, sir. I wish you would make it another. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You give me bad advice. So put my advice in your pocket, sir, and let your flesh and blood follow it. Well, I will be enough of a sinner to be a double dealer. There's another. Primo, segundo, tercio is a good move, and the old saying is, third time's the charm. Three notes make harmony, and the bells of St. Mary's, sir, may put you in mind. One, two, three. (laughs) You can fool no more money out of me in this hand. Hmm. If you will let your lady know I am here to speak with her and bring her along with you, Mm -hmm. it may awake my generosity further. And so, sir, sing a lullaby to your generosity until I come again. I will awake it soon. Mm. Away, good fool. Officers? Here is the man, sir, that did rescue me. Orsino, this is that Antonio that took the phoenix and her freight from Crete. And this is he that did the tiger board when your young nephew lost his leg. 
Here in the streets, and fearing not the danger, in private conflict, we arrested him. That face of his I do remember well. Yet when I saw it last, it was enraged and hidden by the grimy smoke of war. A trifling vessel he was captain of, built better for a puddle than the sea, which with determination he did make hard combat with our brave and noble fleet. So even our envious and beaten sailors cried fame and honor to him. Uh, sir. What's the matter? He did me kindness, fought on my behalf, but afterwards spoke strange and senselessly. I know not what distraction it came from. Notable pirate. <laughs> you salt water thief. What foolish boldness brought you to the mercies of those you've made your enemies in ways so bloody and so costly? Noble, sir. I do shake off these names you give to me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess I was your enemy in righteous battle. Well, witchcraft drew me here. That most ungrateful boy there by your side. From the rude seas enraged and foamy mouth, I did save him. A wreck, past hope he was. His life I gave him, and then I did add my love. Without discretion or restraint, all dedicated to him and for his sake. When being there arrested, his false friendship made him deny acquaintance to my face. And in a wink denied me my own wallet, which I had gladly lent him for his use not half an hour before. How can this be? Oh, my... When came he to this town? Today, my lord, and for three months before, no interim, no, not a minute apart, both day and night, did we keep company. Oh, here comes the countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for you, fellow, fellow, your words are madness. Three months, this youth has been my trusted aid. No! Hey, settle down. This must wait. But here's Olivia. Olivia! What wants, my lord, but what you cannot have? So how may Olivia be of service to you? Cesario, you do not keep your promise. Madam. Gracious Olivia! What do you say, Cesario? Good my lord. My lord would speak. My duty hushes me. If it be still the same old tune, my lord, it is as thick and foul to my ear as dogs that howl after an angel sings. You're still so cruel. I'm still so constant, lord. What? In perverseness? You uncivil lady, on whose ungracious and ungentle altar my soul has laid such faithful offerings that ever devotion tendered. What shall I do? You shall do as you can and as you will. Why should I not? Had I the heart to do it, as did the very complex Oedipus kill what I love? A savage jealousy can sometimes feel like honor. But hear this. Since you, Olivia, do waste my faith, and that I partly know the precious toy that screws me from my place in your esteem, stay you, the marble-hearted tyrant, still. But this, your plaything, whom I know you love, and whom, by heaven, I swear I care for dearly, him I will tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in spite of my true love. Come, boy, with me! My thoughts are full of mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I do love to spite a raven's heart with thinner dove. And I most cheerfully and willingly for your delight, a thousand deaths would die. Ah! Where goes Cesario? After him I love. <gasps> more than I love these eyes, more than my life, more by all mores than ever I'll love wife. If I do lie, you witnesses above, punish my life for perjuring my love. Why me detested? How am I beguiled? Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Have you forgot yourself? Is it so long? Mariah, call forth the Holy Father. Yes, madam. Ugh. Come away, boy! Where to, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay! Husband? Yes, husband. Can he that deny? Her husband, sir? No, no, my lord, not I. Oh, no, it is a weakness born of fear that makes you protest your true love to me. <gasps> fear not, Cesario. Take up your fortunes. Be that you know you are, and then you are as great as him you fear. Husband? 
<clears throat> oh, welcome, Father. Father, I charge you by your reverence here to unfold our secret. What you know that's lately passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joining of your hands, attested by the holy touch of lips, strengthened by interchangement of your rings. My watch does tell me, since that blessed event, I've traveled two more hours to my grave. <laughs> oh, you deceitful cub! What will you be when time has grown a grizzle on your chin? Or will your web of lies so quickly grow that a mistake shall be your overthrow? Goodbye, and take her. But direct your feet where you and I henceforth may never meet. My lord, I do protest. I oh, do not swear. Keep here some faith, though you have so much fear. Ah, for the love of God, a surgeon! Send one immediately to Sir Toby! What? Oh, Toby! What's the matter? <sighs> he has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody brain pan, too. For the love of God, your help. I would give up all my other horses to be at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? <sighs> the Duke's gentleman, one Cesario. We took him for a coward, but he's the very devil incontinent. My gentleman, Cesario? <laughs> Oh, God's lifelines, here he is. You broke my head for nothing. And that that I did, Sir Toby made me do it. Why do you speak to me? <laughs> I never hurt you. Huh? You drew your sword upon me without cause, oh. but I did treat you fair and hurt you not. Ooh, if a bloody brain pan be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you think nothing of a bloody brain pan. <laughs> Here comes Sir Toby stumbling. You shall hear more. But if he had not been in drink, he would have walloped you other house than he did. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Come on, Toby. You <sighs> got. Okay. Oh, how now, gentlemen? How is with you? Death. Yeah, that's all one. He has hurt me, and there's an end on it. Oh, I need medicine. I Lush! D did you see Dick the Surgeon, Lush? Oh, the surgeon's drunk, Sir Toby. An hour ago, his eyes were crossing at eight in the morning. Oh, then he's a rogue! A slowery, pokery, pokehead! Uh, oh, I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him! Who has caused this chaos? I'll help you, Sir Toby. Our wounds will be dressed together. Will you help? An asshead and a simpleton and a scoundrel, a thin-faced scoundrel, a stooge. Let his heart be looked to, Mariah. Ah. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here, here, you got this. It's fine. Come on. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, madam. I have hurt your kinsmen. Oh, but had it been the brother of my blood, I would have done no less for my own safety. <gasps> You're staring at me strangely, and by that I do perceive I have offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other not so long ago. There's two of them. Oh, no, no. One face, one voice, one costume, and two persons. A mirror made by nature that is and is not. Antonio! Oh, oh. oh my dear Antonio. Oh. How have the hours racked and tortured me since I did lose you? Sebastian, are you? Doubt you that, Antonio? How have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Oh, most wonderful. Which is Sebastian. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. Nor do I have the powers of a god who can be here and there. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges did devour. Oh, some kindness, sir. What kin are you to me? What countryman? What name? What parentage? Of Messaline? Sebastian was my father. Such <gasps> a Sebastian was my brother too, so went he suited to his watery tomb. 
If spirits can assume both flesh and blood, you come to scare us. Oh, a spirit I am indeed, but with such human attributes attired, which from the womb I always did call mine. Were you a woman, as the rest does match, I should let fall my tears upon your cheek and say, Much welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day when Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. The memory is vivid in my soul. (laughs) He finished, indeed, his mortal state that day. My twin and I turned thirteen years. If something halts our reconciliation that's other than my masculine attire, do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do go here and yell that I am Viola. (laughs) (laughs) Which, to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town who has my woman's garb and by whose help I was preserved to serve this noble duke. (laughs) 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 All these adventures of my days since then have been between this lady and this lord. Mm -hmm. Olivia. Uh So you have all the luck. (laughs) For hearts will always love what hearts do love. (laughs) You wanted to be married to a woman, and all is well with that. But now it seems you're married both to woman and to man. (laughs) Be not amazed. Most noble is his blood. If this be real, as yet my eyes see true, I too will share in this most happy day. (laughs) Boy. Uh, girl. (laughs) Yeah. You've said to me a thousand times you'd never love a woman more than me. And all those sayings I will overswear. And all those swearings keep as true in soul as does that orbid firmament of fire that severs day from night. Give me your hand, and let me see you in your woman's garb. <laughs> the captain that did rescue me is imprisoned for no good cause, and by the unjust word of one Malvolio, a gentleman. He shall release him. Fetch Malvolio to us. And still, oh, no, now I do remember. They say, poor gentleman, he's much deranged. (sighs) This most ecstatic frenzy of my own did banish his sad frenzy from my mind. How does he, Festy? Truly, madam, he holds Beelzebub at a pole's end, as well as a man in his situation may do. He here wrote a letter to you. I, I should have given it to you this morning, but as a madman's rantings are no gospels, It matters not much when they are delivered. Open it and read it. Look then to be well educated when the fool performs the madman. (laughs) By the Lord, madam. What now? Are you mad? No, madam, I do but read madness. If your ladyship will have it as it ought to be, you must allow vocalizing. Please read in your right wits. So I do, Madonna, but to read in his right wits is to read like this. Therefore, (laughs) ponder, my princess, and lend me your ear. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Read it you, Mariah. Um, Mariah? By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though you have taken me from the light and given your drunken uncle rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the exhibition I put on, with which I will do myself much good and you much shame. The madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? (sighs) Yes, madam. This sounds not like derangement. Oh, oh, oh. is this the madman? Yes, my lord, the same. (sighs) How are you, Malvolio? (laughs) Madam, you have done me wrong. Notorious wrong. Have I, Malvolio? No. Lady, you have! Pray you review this letter. You can't deny it is your handwriting. So tell me, with the decency of honor, why you have given me such clear signs of liking to ask me to come smiling and cross-gartered, to put on yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lesser people, and doing this in an obedient hope 
Why have you suffered me to be imprisoned and made the most breathful stooge that ever deception played on? Tell me why. Oh, no, Malvolio, this is not my writing. What? Though I confess it looks so much the same. But it's Mariah's handwriting, oh. no doubt. Oh. And now I do remember. It was she first told me you were mad. So be content. You shall be both the plaintiff and the judge of your own case. <laughs> Good madam, hear me speak. Most freely, I confess, myself and Toby set this design against Malvolio here because of some unpleasant, petty acts he had performed against us. I did write the letter with your drunkle's great supporting, and to recognize this, he has married me. Ah, well, well, well. <laughs> How with a fun-filled malice it was acted may rather nod to laughter than revenge. Oh, blood. Oh, no, poor man. How they have baffled you. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> I was one, sir, in this interlude. But do you remember? Madam, why laugh you at such an artless rascal? Unless you laugh and give encouragement to him, he's stumped. And thus, the whirligig of time brings in his revenges. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. <laughs> he has been most notoriously abused. We shall in time entreat him to a peace. But now, Viola, hmm? you are free and for your service. So much against the custom of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and since you called me lordship for so long, <laughs> here is my hand. You shall from this time be your lordship's lady. A sister. You are she. When all is known, and sunset takes her bow, a solemn combination shall be made of our dear souls. Meantime, sweet sister, <laughs> we will not part from here. Cesario, come, for so you will be while you are a man, but when in other garments you are seen, Orsino's lady and his fancy's queen. Oh! <laughs> 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 when I was and a little tiny boy with a hay, oh, the wind and the rain, a happy thing was but a toy. The rain, it raineth every, every day. But when I came to growing up with the hay, oh, the wind and the rain with rigid rules, men filled my cup. For the rain, it raineth every, every day. Oh, the rain, it raineth every day On the righteous and the gone astray We're the same at heaven's door Once the rain and thunder roar And the rain, it raineth every day The rain, it raineth every day The rain, it raineth every, every day
sacks with the hay, oh, the wind and the rain. All things I found were a little more complex. Oh, the rain it raineth every every day. podcast series Twelfth Night was translated into modern English verse by Alison Carey and directed by Christopher Liam Moore. The cast is as follows. Amy Brenneman as Olivia. Jordan Barbour as Sir Andrew Aguecheek. Catherine Castellanos as Mariah. Brandon David Delsid as Sebastian. Rodney Gardner as Festi. Michael Goodfriend as the bartender and officer too. Christopher Jean as Antonio and Curio. David Kelly as Malvolio. Tina Munoz Pandian as Valentine and officer. Daniel Parker as Sir Toby Belch. Jamie Ann Romero as Viola. Tramel Tillman as Orsino. George Bennett Watson as the sea captain and the priest. Casting by the Telsey office. Karen Castle, CSA and Ada Karamanian. Voice and text coach, Julie Foe. Episode scripts were adapted and produced by Catherine Eaton. Original music composition by David Rifle. Sound design and mix by Lindsay Jones. Sound engineering by Sadaharu Yagi. Mix engineer and dialogue editor, Larry Walsh. Podcast mastering by Greg Cortez at New Monkey Studio. Coordinating producer, Transcend Streaming, Kira Bowie and Liana Keys. Script supervisor, Jordan Moore. Managing producer, Robert Capadona. Senior producer, Miriam Lauba. Executive producer, Michael Goodfriend. The senior manager of business operations and partnerships at Next Chapter Podcasts is Sally Cade Holmes. The Play on Podcast series, Twelfth Night, is produced by Next Chapter Podcasts, and is made possible by the generous support of the Hits Foundation. Visit ncpodcasts.com for more about the Play On podcast series. Visit playonshakespeare.org for more about Play On Shakespeare. 
Hear more about the Play on Shakespeare podcast series by listening to bonus content at ncpodcasts.com, where you'll find interviews with the artists, producers, and engineers who brought it all to life. And remember, if music be the food of love, play on. Got 10 minutes? Countdown to Blast Off with host Bethany Van Delft every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Get ready for a bite-sized podcast for kids and their adults that explains what's going on in the world. It'll bring you the context that all kids and their adults need to know about events, sports, science, gaming, pop culture, entertainment, and more. Awesome guests like Lego Masters Judge Amy Corbett, Dr. Anthony Fauci, and the voice of Pokemon's Ash Ketchum are guaranteed to swing by. Make the 10 news part of your family routine to connect, explore, and learn something new. And look out for the 10 news road trip remixes every Thursday this summer, which explore the topics you care about most. Listen to the 10 news on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Next Chapter Podcasts.